let's take a look at how to generate an OpenAPI spec with FastAPI. This is a speakeasy API advice video. We start off our FastAPI and pass in a list of servers. We also want to pass in what's inside the info block in our specification. So the summary, description, version, and title. Let's create two classes to enable us to model the responses and the types of responses we might return. We can now use those classes within our root definition to let both FastAPI and our OpenAPI spec know how it should be returning the data. As your API develops and grows bigger, you're likely going to split it in separate files. Now, FastAPI will provide conveniences to help reduce the boilerplate when doing that. And while the separation may reduce some cognitive overhead while you're working in particular sections, it doesn't mean that similar groups are automatically created in your documentation. We can use tags to override this to group them. So we can actually add metadata to our tags to improve the developer experience even further. FastAPI accepts a parameter called OpenAPI tags, which we can use to add metadata such as descriptions and lists of external documentation links to our tags themselves. So when FastAPI outputs an OpenAPI specification, it generates a unique OpenAPI operation ID for each path. Now by default, this unique ID is generated by the FastAPI generate unique ID function. This can often lead to cumbersome and unintuitive names. So to improve usability, we've got a couple of options that we can use to override this. Now this isn't guaranteed to generate unique IDs and it won't handle method names without an underscore. However, it's a good demonstration on how you can add a function that generates IDs based on the method's name. With FastAPI, you can actually specify the operation ID per operation. So let's add a new parameter called operation ID to the operations decorator. This is a much better way to do this in my opinion. So starting with OpenAPI 3.1, it's actually possible to specify webhooks for your application inside the OpenAPI spec. So here's how we might add that to FastAPI. And then FastAPI is gonna generate this top level webhook section inside our specification itself. So now that we've customized our OpenAPI specification, we can actually use Speakeasy to generate SDKs based off of it. Let's take a look at how the information that we've added to our spec affects how Speakeasy will generate our SDK. It's gonna create the following abbreviated code. And you're gonna find calls to SDK configuration get server details when your SDK is building any API URLs. So we're probably gonna to want to add retries to our SDK by leveraging X speakeasy retries. We can add global retries and we'll need to customize the schema generated by the fast APIs get open API function. But keep in mind that you'll need to add this after declaring all of your operational routes. What you can also do is add retries per request by adding an X speakeasy retries to the single operation where you need it. Update the operation and add the OpenAPI extra parameter as follows. As you can see, that allows you to go from API to spec to SDK in under five minutes, thanks to Speakeasy.